We like routine, don't we? It's very powerful. It's quite easy to follow a set pattern, walk the same path, do the same thing over and over and over again. We find comfort in routine and order. It sets a, a boundary to our days. It's the framework within which we, we live out our lives. Years ago, uh, I used to work for, uh, for Congresswoman Liz Patterson. I worked in D.C. for a year and then I came back and I ran her district office. And the routine was always the same, particularly on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. There was sort of a routine for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Tuesday and Thursday was a little bit different because those were airport days. The alarm clock went off at 5, shower, shave, in the car, 1275 Partridge Road. Wait while she finished packing lunches for her kids at school and putting aside meals that she had prepared for her family while she was gone. And wait, and wait, and look at my watch, and wait some more and say, okay, Congress, I mean, you're going to miss your flight. Congress, I mean, you're going to miss your flight. No, 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 I just got to do this. And then we would get in the car and we would drive to Charlotte. Now, this, of course, was before all the security issues of 2001. So we would come, uh, and we, they gave us a police cruiser, by the way. We had a 1987 Crown Victoria. Um, think the Blues Brothers, okay? Uh, quite, quite a car, quite a car. Uh, but we would come sliding to a stop in front of the airport. Uh, she would get out, I'd grab her bags. It, it would be like those old OJ commercials where you're running to the airport. We'd get down the concourse, we'd get right to the gate, and they would just be waiting on us. They'd be like, morning, Congresswoman. <laughs> And we'd get her on the plane and off she would go. Um, so I found out the, the danger of falling out of a routine one morning. Um, okay, shower, shave, get in the car, go. Okay, I'm rushing. I don't know what happened. I hit snooze or something. So, uh, so I'm a little bit late. So I decided that I would, I would shave in the shower. Okay? So I get to the congresswoman's house. And she kept looking at me real funny. <laughs> and finally, we're driving down the road. She says, what happened to your mustache? What, what are we talking about? I look up at the rearview mirror and it's like gone on this side. <laughs> and when that happens, you kind of have to tilt your head the other way to make it look even. But the routine, we fell into a routine of doing this and doing that at the exact same time every single day. I was attending St. Margaret's uh, up in Bowling Springs. And, uh, and some friends of mine had, had gone on a retreat weekend. And they kept saying, Rob, you really need to go on this retreat. You really need to go on this retreat. And they were talking to Sandra because it was a couple's weekend. You really need to go on this retreat. You really need to go on this retreat. We're busy. We have things that we have to do. She's an operating room nurse. I'm a congressional aide. We have a routine. It was very hard to break the routine. But finally, after being pushed and prodded and coerced, honestly, we decided to do this weekend retreat. And, and, and so we went on. We went, we broke our routine, we did something completely out of character, completely sort of beyond the norm for us. Routine is a powerful thing. It gives order to our day. But routine can also be problematic. Routine sets us into a pattern of behavior. Eventually you walk the same path so long that you're digging a trench with your footsteps. You look behind you and you can see the path. And you look ahead and you see the same path because you've been walking the same direction for days or weeks or months Breathe. Routine is a powerful thing. Which brings us, of course, to the Old Testament reading from Exodus and our dear friend Moses. Now Moses had been an adopted Hebrew prince of Egypt. Of course, he hadn't really known he was Hebrew. He was the daughter of, uh, of, uh, of Pharaoh's sister. He was a person who had extraordinary potential, and yet 
Once it is discovered what he what he is, who he is, what he has responded to the uh, to the uh, to the abuse of a Hebrew slave, he ends up being cast out, and he ends up living with kinspeople. Actually, it says in the text that he was tending the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro, a priest of Midian. By the way, this is just sort of back into that long history that we talked about with, uh, with, uh, with Genesis. Um, Midian was actually the name of, uh, of one of Abraham's other sons. Remember we had, uh, we had Isaac and Ishmael? Well, after Sarah died, Abraham took another wife and had other children. They were not a part of a larger inheritance, but one of them, Midian, uh, became the father of a tribe. Jethro is a priest of Midian. That's who the father-in-law of Moses is. But more importantly, Jethro has flocks and herds. And Moses' routine is to tend the flocks and the herds. And so daily, day after day after day, doing his job, he would walk the same path. He had a routine. It was a routine with value. It was a routine that was important. It was a routine that provided for his family. It was a routine. And then one day, walking that well-worn path. And by the way, and some of you I know like to hunt. You get in the woods. You know what game trails look like. You know what it looks like when, when uh, wildlife has been using the same path for years and years and years. You see it in the river bottom and across the hillsides. That's what it looks like when a herd has been walking the same path, when a flock has been walking the same path over and over and over, perhaps for generations. That's the path that Moses has been walking. And then one day, there is a, a flickering just out of the corner of his eye, something off to the side. A, a burst of, of unexpected light. And so in the midst of his routine, he pauses. There's a break. An interruption. Interruptions can be holy things. Interruptions can be a gift from God. I was a congressional aide. I knew exactly what I was going to do with my life, without doubt, without question. I had friends, by the way, who years later continued to walk that path. One of them ended up being an ambassador, another an assistant secretary and treasurer. Their routine led them in a particular way. Following a particular path led them to a future. And I got interrupted. By, of all things, a retreat weekend at Camp Bradford. Sandra and I went on this weekend. She was not partic particularly impressed. Um, she had grown up in the original Free Will Baptist Church of Pentecostal Faith. And so, guitars, and yes guys, tambourines, were kind of old hat for her. It was all very brand new for me, and I had a lot of skepticism. I kind of listened to this uh, in a very jaundiced way. I remember talking to one of the priests and, uh, and saying to him, I see what you're doing. You are attempting to induce a Protestant conversion experience. Um, what an awful thing to say to somebody. <laughs> what a presumptuous thing to say. What an arrogant thing to say. He just smiled at me. And the weekend went on. And suddenly, on the last day of that weekend, I got it. My routine and my life had been interrupted. They were interrupted not by being asked to go on this retreat. My life wasn't interrupted by a series of talks I heard. 
my life was interrupted by the Holy Spirit. And in a moment of realization, I began to tremble and I began to weep uncontrollably. Because I knew what was next. And it was not a part of my routine. And it was not the path that I had planned to walk. In the car, driving back from Aiken, I look at Sandra and I said, Hun, I'm supposed to be a priest. And she said, I know. A holy interruption that wouldn't have occurred if I had continued with the routine that I had been walking. Moses is walking a path when suddenly a flicker of light catches his eye. Now, he had security and he had safety. He had a wife. He, he had family. But he paused. And he allowed the routine to be interrupted. And he stepped into the presence of God. And it may be that only in that moment that he became Moses. We like routine, don't we? We get anxious when routine is broken. We get anxious when the day isn't what it's been in the past because the path is safe. The path's born. Peter and Andrew, James and John, were standing on the bank when this crazy preacher comes along. They were mending their nets. They were doing the work of their business. They had a routine. And they were interrupted. We are about to enter 12 weeks, maybe 13, of interruption. And it's okay. It really, really is. For me, the interruption is about rest and restoration and renewal and study. And I will do those things. And quite frankly, I plan to fish and hunt and write. But for you, you are entering a holy time. You are entering a period when the routine is being set aside. You are being given a gift, the opportunity to step off the path and look for the glimmer of light and hear the voice of God. That's what these next weeks are about. A holy interruption to truly see if we are what we say we are, the hands of Christ in the world. How do we do this? Well, that prayer for spiritual growth we say every Sunday, I want you to pray that. Romans 12. Beth, that's the epistle reading today. If you would... Put that and the prayer for spiritual growth in every grapevine for the next 12, maybe 13 weeks. And that's all you have to do. We're all be give, being given a, a gift, really. An interruption in what was becoming a well-walked path. So that when we return to it, we will see it and the opportunities it offers in new and extraordinary ways. 
We are given the gift to be the hands of Christ. Amen.